In this video I would like to show you how you can use a non-calibrated microphone to work with REW. So often on the internet I see questions that, of people who are asking can I use my microphone that came with my AVR um, to do measurements in REW and often people say no you can't it is completely wrong. Now. In fact, those microphones, mine anyway, isn't that bad. I tested it. So what I'm going to show here is how can you calibrate this microphone um, in a good way. Now, to calibrate something, you need a calibrated microphone. So I do have the REW. Uh, I do have the, sorry, the UMIC1 microphone, which is often used with REW and... I do have the calibration file from the internet. I lent this microphone from a friend. Now, the idea of this video is to show you that first I'm gonna make a measurement, a full range measurement, um, with the UMIC1. And then afterwards I'm gonna do the same with this EPAO uh, Yamaha little microphone. And then I'm gonna make the difference between the measurement of the UMIC and the measurement of the EPAO. Out of that, I get a calibration file. And to end, I'm going to show you if I do a measurement with uh, one microphone and the other, that the difference isn't that big anymore. So, in fact, you really can use this little microphone. So, the only downside is you actually need another, uh, um, you make one or a calibrated microphone to do this calibration. Um, I show you how we do that. Now, before we can start, you, of course, you have to plug in your little microphone. So I do that in the sound card of my computer. Um, my audio card asks if it is plugged in. I say, okay. And then, which is very important is you have to have a look at the specifications of your uh, audio card and your, uh, the gain that is needed for your uh, microphone, because I had to set it on plus 30 dB to have a good measurement in REW. REW will show you if you don't have enough gain. So it may be different for you, but the thing is, it is very important to go to the settings in your windows. Um, so I'm going to do that. That's the audio settings. I open the audio settings in windows. And here I can see that I have the microphone, the Realtek microphone um, in there. Now you go to the specs of the microphone. You choose extra specs and then you get this um, specs of your microphone. So here some there's something you, you, you shouldn't be aware of. You have here enhancements. In Dutch it's verbeteringen, but in English it's enhancements. It is really important that you shut them out. You, you have to think this, that, that, that box on. You do not want any enhancement in this microphone because otherwise your measurements are going to be completely wrong. You can't use it. I've seen on the internet people saying those microphones aren't good just because if they do a measurement at uh, around, um, I think, 8 kilohertz, it goes completely down, uh, things like that. Now, that has everything to do with the fact they didn't uh, set the um, specs of the microphone right. So, you do shut that down. Now, the levels... I already set that in my audio card, but as you can see, I set the microphone at 88 and my uh, gain, I had to set at plus 30 dB to have a, a good measurement. So Rue will show you if it isn't uh, high enough that you can see. Um, so th those are the most important settings you have to do in Windows uh, to get your microphone um, good to work.
So the next thing is you open REW, you have the microphone connected to your audio card and you go to preferences. So I open that and I already have the microphone here uh, to be used as an input device. So I choose that. Now we're going to have a look at the levels. Tick the box, check levels. I do a measurement. And as you can see uh, here, the measurement and the gain is in the right place here. So we are ready to do measurements. So the next thing is, I'm going to also plug in the Umic microphone. Now the Umic microphone, as everyone knows, is a USB microphone. Um, I'm going to plug it into the USB card. I'm going to put it here in the stand also. And we're going to have a look. So here it is, you make one. Now the calibration file should already be loaded. So you can see that I had that from the internet. Uh, the calibration file for a 90 degrees measurement with the UMIC is already in there. So that will be our, our calibrated microphone to do uh, the measurements. Um, check the levels. So all is fine here. So we can go, go on and do our first measurements. Next step will be the measurement itself. Now, there are some important things to say here. First, I try to do the measurements uh, with both the mics with a normal sweep. And I actually didn't get good results to make a um, calibration file. I still don't know why. But the thing is, the way to go is to do a moving mic measurement with pink noise and the RTA. So I will do that for the two mics and the average will be um, quite a good uh, measurement to, to, to have the calibration file made. The reason I think is because otherwise with the sweep you, you, you get um, some spikes, some measurements which are all evened out if you do a moving mic measurement and it gives a much better result to uh, be to, to have a calibration file afterwards. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Now, first I'm going to have to um, to put on the generator. So, so to be clear, now I use the UMIC one eh, with its calibration file in it to do the first measurement. So I'm going to open the generator. Now the generator is put on noise. You take pink periodic noise you do full range and you hit start. So here we have the noise. Um, next, I open the RTA and I'm gonna start here the measurement. So the measurement you see is not the one we have. I'm gonna start here the measurement. So I'm gonna have to be quiet while doing the measurement.
So now I stopped the measurement. As you saw, I moved it around. I'm gonna have it by doing current. You, you get the measurement there. And I'm gonna name it um, Umic Calibrated. So the next measurement is gonna be with the EPAO. So I'm gonna put that, it's on the same stand. Take this one out because it's easier. So I have on the exact same location the EPAO mi microphone. We're gonna set it in preferences. Here. And, we go, and we're gonna do exactly the same measurements. So I'm gonna go to RTA. And that's it. I have the second measurement. So let's uh, drop the generator. Uh, much better, it's quieter. So let's have a look at the two measurements here. I'm gonna give them another color to see the difference. I'm better. Here you go. So already you can see, uh, ah, I'm just going to give it a name. So this is the um, EPAO microphone, non-calibrated. There we go. So you can see that microphone is very, very good already. It's from, from around 20 hertz up to oh, let's say three kilohertz you almost get the exact same measurement so up here things start getting different um, and i think it's especially here that we will need the difference in calibration now the next thing we are going to do is to actually make that calibration file i have the two measurements here um, to be a little bit more clear, I'm going to go to controls. Um, I'm going to set it to 124 smoothing. And that gives a better view already of what we are getting. Now, um, again, we're going go to go, and go to controls. And we're going to choose trace arithmetic. And then you get that little box over here. Now, here you have the possibility to do some things in REW and you need to choose A versus B. And A should be the EPAO non-calibrated. So here you should have the measurement of your non-calibrated microphone. So the one you want a uh, file, uh, a calibration file from. And B, you set the calibrated microphone. So here I already have it, you make calibrated. And you choose A uh, over B here. And then I say generate, generate. And it makes a new file. And we're going to have a look at that file. And to be honest, that is actually the calibration file already. So here we go. I show you this controls so in fact this is already the calibration file now you really don't need a calibration file that is so um, bumpy you can smooth things out uh, simply by having here uh, let's say 
controls I'm gonna say a smoothing of around one sixth I'm gonna apply the smoothing now this is actually what you want as a calibration file and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna export this calibration file uh, in a text file because a calibration file is always a text file and I'm going to show you how we do that. You go to file, you're going to say export and then you say export as text. What we do here is export this um, calibrated A over B file to a text file because a calibration file of a microphone is always a text file. Now here are, you have some uh, things you can put in. Now leave it be and say here OK. And then we're going to give it a file name. And let's say I call it calibration file. Um, EPAO microphone and we're gonna save that file so if I have a look now in my windows I normally should see it with the downloads so here you have it let's open it so that's what you get. That is a, a complete uh, a text file with the calibration curve. So I don't think it's really necessary, but I used to get all this away. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to call it calibration file um, EPAO microphone so there you go I'm gonna save that so it is saved for me on my computer to use it I saw that it is better that I move it to uh, uh, directory I have in REW so I'm gonna take this file I'm gonna copy it I'm gonna move it to program files I'm gonna move it to R REW I have a file here, microphone calibrations, and I'm going to put it in here. So, there you go. It's in there. So, you see calibration file, EPAO, microphone. I have it uh, placed in a uh, um, directory that I can use it in EPAO. Good. So, the next thing we are going to do is uh, make a new measurement with the calibration file in it. So we're going to go to preferences. I still have the EPO microphone in there, but now I'm going to go to calibration files. So here you can see there is no calibration file in there and we're going to browse. And here you have my new made file. That's the one we just uh, saved there. And I'm going to open it. And you can see here that um, the calibration file is loaded. And we're going to go and do a new measurement. Um, and have a look. So generator. I'm going to make some noise again.
and let's have a look at what we got here now. Um, so we're going to make all measurements. Well, first I'm going to give it a new name. So that measurement should be EPAO calibrated. So that is the actual measurement with our new calibrated uh, microphone. And that is the red one let's have it another color so let's make it uh, blue something bluish okay and now we're gonna give all the measurements the same smoothing to to, to have a good view at things uh, i'm gonna say variable smoothing for all so here we go, and there you have it. Um, so as you can see, it is very, very alike now. The green measurement, this one, is the measurement I took with the UMIC-1 microphone. Now, the blue measurement is the measurement that I took with the calibrated um, EPAO microphone and as you can see it is almost exactly the same. It is, uh, well this is what you want, this, you, you want a, a phone that is calibrated, uh, a phone, I'm sorry, a microphone that is calibrated. So here you go, that is the way I did it, um, to have the difference between the non-calibrated and the calibrated microphone, you can see it here. So the red one, the red line is the EPO non-calibrated. The blue one is the EPO calibrated. Um, I'm going to put that away. I'm going to show you once again the UMIC one calibrated, which is almost exactly the same measurement you get. Um, let's give it a bit big, a, a better uh, resolution. So I'm going to go to controls, let's say we choose um, 124 smoothing, apply smoothing, so you, you can see that it almost is exactly the same measurement you get here. And that's all, that's what I wanted to show you. Now, to finish this video, I do have some uh, last remarks, let's say. Um, the thing we did here was a measurement on a certain location from a certain speaker, and we used that to make our calibration file. Um, to be honest, it isn't always exactly correct, and there are some deviations here. But i show you what we are talking about, and... Anyway, in my opinion, um, this microphone can perfectly be used with its calibration file to do hobby measurements like we do in our home theater systems. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to place this um, uh, microphone and we're going to place it to another uh, location somewhere, uh, not on the axis of the speaker. We're going to put the UMIC mic in there also. Um, and it's not on axis, it's just simply in my room here. The other thing I've done is I took um, all speakers in, 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 in here. So my complete surround system, including my two subwoofers, are now uh, in the chain. They will play with the next measurements. So the measurements we did before was just with this speaker. Now we're going to measure some somewhere here in the middle. Um, I would prefer to do it on my listening uh, position, but the cable of this UMIC is not long enough. So the measurement you get here from my uh, home theater is not the measurement on the listening position. Let's be clear about that. But we're going to do two measurements again. We're going to do the measurement with the UMIC, um, which is the calibrated mi microphone. And we're going to do the same measurement with the now calibrated um, uh, EPL microphone. So also I'm going to do a sweep here. Um, I'm not going to use the 
RTA. I'm gonna do a sweep. And the next thing I'm gonna do is also change the, the um, volume of the two measurements. Um, because I want to show you something which I forgot to mention um, uh, in the first uh, measurements. And it may be important for you to do uh, the calibration file. So just now for reference, let's do a measurement, a sweep. So I'm going to say that in the preferences, we're going to go to the UMIC 1. That's the first measurement we're going to take. So the calibration curve of the UMIC 1 is, is, is in there, of course. So that is what we should call the, the right uh, measurement uh, with the UMIC 1. And I'm going to do a sweep with the complete surround system in it. Um, measure and start. So here we go. Now, I'm going to do exactly the same again. Again, this is a sweep, uh, not from the listening position. Uh, we're going to do exactly the same with um, the EPAO microphone. It's in here. I'm going to remove this one. I'm going to lessen the volume a bit. And here you go, you have the second measurement. So to have a good view, we are going to do the smoothing, apply smoothing. Now, because I changed the measurement um, or the gain, I'm sorry, of the two measurements, you see there is a difference. And what I wanted to show you to, if you have that on your measurements to make a calibration file, of course, you want to have the measurements on the same axis. To do that, you can go to controls here. So the box controls. You can go to align SPL. And then you choose where you want to align SPL. For example, now I say I want to align the SPL at 1 kilohertz over 2 octaves. What it's going to do is it's going to have a look and it's going to replace the two measurements at the same level. So if you say OK, and you see the measurements will um, get over each other, which can be important. But that's one thing to say, because you should align the SPLs before you make your calibration curve like I just did. And just to show you how to do that, because I didn't do that the first time because they were already aligned, because they were exactly the same volume I, uh, I did the measurements. Now, again, you see this sweep I did, and you see what results you can expect from a Galibrate microphone. As you see, the green measurement here is the measurement with the Umic uh, microphone, and the brown or orange measurement is the me measurements I did with the uh, calibrated EPO microphone. I the thing I want to show you is that you should realize it isn't exactly the same. But it's so close that really you can use that to do the necessary measurements in your room. So with this, I think I showed everything to know, to calibrate your own microphone, um, to use it further on. Now, there's one thing left to say. I showed you how to calibrate this EPO microphone, uh, which is in fact a microphone that you put in your audio card um, analog uh, input. 
while the EPAO, um, as everyone knows, is a USB microphone. To be honest, um, it is always better if you have a measuring microphone like that, that you use uh, some sort of microphone preamp. It's, it's, it's just better, but then you have to invest in a preamp and maybe you don't want to do that because at the same level you, you, could, you could buy a Umic uh, microphone, so that's not what you want to do. That's why I showed you how you can directly put that in your um, uh, audio card. Now, if you have something lying around, like a microphone um, preamp, you should use that. Uh, so that means you put that in the microphone preamp and you put the microphone preamp in your audio card. So what I use normally, or what I have here, is a um, H1N Zoom. That is, in fact, a recording microphone, which, which I can use to, to do recordings from different things. Now, the, EPL, the H1N is, in fact, also a USB microphone. And you have the possibility to have a line in uh, over here. So if you don't want to use the microphone of the Zoom itself, you can plug in a line in, and the output of the Zoom is a USB. So in my opinion, this is the way to go, or the better way to go, that you plug in, that I, I, I plug in this uh, EPAO microphone here in the zoo, Zoom, use it as a preamp and as a USB out, so you can, uh, you can use it exactly the same as you use the USB output of the Umic one. Um, if you have something lying around like that, do it this way. So the complete system is the same to calibrate the microphone. Nothing changes here, but you will get slightly better results if you do that. Uh, another way could be that Behringer has also a um, USB preamplifier um, so you can plug this one in or maybe you do have a Behringer microphone like I have uh, an ECM 8000 now if you have already an ECM 8000 and you plug that in your Behringer um, preamp use that one and the same you can calibrate it if you have the Umic one so I think I can wrap it up here and that's all I wanted to discuss um, so I'd be happy to have your comments on what we did here. Uh, I hope I helped some people out. And I hoped I also showed that the results of a raw, so non-calibrated um, uh, EPAO uh, microphone, the ones that you get with your um, receiver, aren't that uh, bad at all. I, I can show you these... Um, here again, so that's that, that's the measurements we did. The first, so that was the Umic one calibrated, and that was the EPAO non-calibrated. So that's the one we started with. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put it on the same smoothing. So that's the EPAO we started with. So as you can see, before we started all this to calibrate, that was already there. Um, if you use the EPAO microphone or the one you get with your Denon or with your uh, Marans or with your Yamaha, um, it, it, it isn't that bad at all. Um, it's in the higher regions from 10k up to 20k that the big difference start. And sometimes, uh, not here, but, but in the lows, it's, it's, it's quite good. It's already quite good. So if you can't calibrate, then you can still use that microphone to do all your measurements. Just be aware to understand that maybe above 7 or 10K that uh, the measurements won't be that accurate uh, as they should be. But not bad at all. So if you can't calibrate, well, you can still use that microphone. So that's it for this video. I hope it was uh, interesting for some of us out there. Um, 
If you have comments on the video, please um, give them and I'll try to answer them. If uh, there are suggestions or things we can do different, uh, please uh, leave it in the comments. And uh, for now, this was it. Thank you. Bye.